Look at this ominous dark cloud. Is it rotating? What on earth is happening here? What you see is called a supercell. It's a storm, often a thunderstorm, that contains an updraft rotating about a vertical axis. That's why they're also called rotating thunderstorms. There are actually four types of thunderstorms, single cell, multi-cell, squall line, and supercell. Out of them all, supercells are the rarest and the most severe. They're typically isolated from other thunderstorms and last for two to four hours. Supercells are very common for the Great Plains of the United States. In particular, the area known as Tornado Alley. But they can occur in other parts of the world too. For example, in Europe, Argentina, Uruguay, and southern Brazil. These storms can be any size, large and small, high or low topped. Supercells are also associated with the most severe tornadoes, even though not every supercell can create one. These storms usually produce great amounts of torrential rainfall and hail, and are accompanied by powerful winds and downbursts. Downbursts are powerful winds that come down from a thunderstorm. Once they hit the ground, they spread out very quickly. These winds are dangerous, since they can cause a lot of damage. Even though they're often confused with tornadoes, downbursts are a totally different phenomenon. Let's have a look at how a downburst forms. At the beginning of a thunderstorm, there's a powerful updraft. That's why the cloud grows vertically and hailstones and raindrops start forming inside. The storm matures and the updraft keeps feeding the cloud with unstable moist air. Hailstones and raindrops are now big and heavy enough to fall to the ground. But sometimes, the updraft is so strong that it suspends huge amounts of hail and rain in the upper part and the center of the storm. But let's say some dry air gets into the middle and lower parts of the storm. It can cause a downburst. When it happens, all that amount of rain and hail from the upper part of the storm dashes toward the ground, dragging along a lot of air. All this mass gains speed. And when the downburst eventually reaches the ground, it's like a stream of water coming out of a faucet and hitting the sink. It spreads in all directions at an incredible speed, sometimes more than 100 miles per hour. But what you might most likely come across is called a microburst. It means that those terrible winds are confined to an area smaller than 2.5 miles across. While speaking about tornadoes, I can't but mention volcanic tornadoes. They're possibly one of the scariest natural phenomena. When a volcano erupts, it throws hot rock and ash high into the atmosphere. As for lava pieces and hot gases, they travel down the volcano's slope. When this flow is moving down, some of the gases trapped inside begin to rise and spin at the same time. They get squeezed by the surrounding air, which makes them spin faster and faster. That's how a volcanic tornado gets born. On the bright side, this phenomenon has a very short lifespan. If you ever see a tight burning column of air, that's a fire tornado, a creepy combination of whirlwind sounds and scorching inferno. This phenomenon is also called a fire twister or fire whirl. This dangerous natural phenomenon mostly occurs during wildfires. While burning, such fires create a big area of boiling hot air just above the ground. And when this scorching air gets mixed with the cooler air higher up, it results in a whirlwind that churns up burning debris and flames. The most powerful fire nados can stretch hundreds of feet into the sky. Another dangerous natural phenomenon is called a snow squall. If you get caught in a snow squall while driving, you won't find a safe place on a highway because this is an intense, but thankfully pretty short, period of heavy snowfall that comes along with powerful gusty winds and sometimes even lightning. People have known about this phenomenon for quite some time, but the term itself, as well as the warning associated with this danger, appeared only in 2018. Another danger of snow squalls is something called a flash freeze. Come to think of it, it makes sense. Rapidly dropping temperatures and freshly fallen snow glaze highways very fast. 
This makes controlling your car almost impossible. The next curious phenomenon I'm going to talk about happens extremely rarely and is still poorly understood. It's usually not something big and turbulent. Dust devils can be tiny and vanish within minutes. They've got lots of names, whirlwinds, dusters, and sand spouts. Dust devils look like funnels of sand spiraling upward from the ground. But unlike their terrifying relatives, tornadoes, these babies are normally nothing to worry about. And still, according to the definition, dust devils fall in the same category as hurricanes and tornadoes. All three natural phenomena feature a column of air kind of spinning around an invisible pole. They're all formed during the collision of different types of air, moist versus dry, or hot versus cold, and so on. But hurricanes usually form over a body of water where cold air slides under warm air. Tornadoes spiral down from the sky when hot air rises through a mass of cold air, and dust devils form on the ground. Even though we call them dust devils, they can actually swirl any loose debris. The main criteria, the pieces have to be small and light enough to be lifted by a fast-moving vortex. By the way, do you know that some clouds can predict extreme weather? For example, shelf clouds. They look like something from a sci-fi movie. They form when warm and moist air gets caught in a thunderstorm updraft. These ominous clouds most often mean a storm is coming. Those huge white lumps over your head are called mammatus clouds. They can make you believe the sky is falling. Most clouds form when air rises into the atmosphere. But mammatus clouds appear when moist and cool air goes down and mixes with dry air. The result is these unique puffed rice clouds. By the way, if you see this phenomenon in the sky, bad weather is just around the corner. Morning glory clouds are extremely rare and harmless. They look like massive tubes stretching across the sky. They can snake for more than 600 miles, sitting relatively low. Most researchers agree that these clouds appear when an updraft squeezes through the cloud. This creates the signature rolling appearance. The cool air at the back of the cloud makes it sink downward. The best, but not the only, place to see the morning glory is Australia's Gulf of Carpentaria. If you decide to travel there to see these clouds, choose a period from late September to early November. Ever seen huge round disks in the sky? Most likely, those were lenticular clouds. They usually form over large and high places, like mountains or hills. When strong wind bumps into some barrier, this creates an air wave. The air kind of wraps around the obstacle. And the higher the barrier is, the colder the air that is rising over it becomes. At some point, the moisture it contains turns into water droplets. And they form these unusual clouds. Lenticular clouds can look like waves, a pizza, or even a stack of pancakes. And these clouds, on the contrary, form low in the sky and after some bad weather. Rainbow clouds appear on top of puffy low-altitude clouds after thunderstorms. They usually hover at the height of around 6,000 feet. When the water vapor they contain condenses, the resulting droplets act like prisms. This forms multicolored caps over the clouds. And a pretty scary bonus fact for you. One of the most common causes of wildfires is lightning from thunderstorms. But have you ever heard of a wildfire that triggered a thunderstorm? Well, now you know. It happened on May 11, 2018, not far from Amarillo, Texas. Then, the super powerful Mallard Fire not only created a massive dense cloud high in the air, but its heat also caused a violent thunderstorm that later dumped tons of quarter-sized hailstones 60 miles away in Wheeler County, Texas. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side. Ah, a purple sunset. You must have seen one of those at least once in your life. Normally, it's nothing ominous and has to do with the way light travels. The light that the sun produces is white. When it goes through a prism, 
you see light waves of different colors, from red and orange to blue, green, and indigo. Light normally travels in a straight line if there's no obstacle in its way. The shorter light waves, including blues and purples, are scattered easier when they meet with those obstacles, like molecules and aerosols in the atmosphere. Because the sun is low on the horizon at sunset and sunrise, its light has to pass through more molecules that scatter the violet and blue light. The colors that your eyes pick up, then, are yellow, orange, and red. But with the right conditions, you can see the gorgeous purple sky. Sometimes purple sky appears for much scarier reasons. It can be caused by hurricanes, wildfires, or dust storms. The concentration of vapor in the air increases, and the light scatters more than usual. Dust, a setting sun, and low cloud cover all contribute to this natural show, too. The sky turns orange and red at dusk if there's still enough light. Then it gives off pink hues, which mix up with a dark blue sky above. Now, do you remember what happens when you mix pink and blue? You get the color purple. Not every hurricane makes the sky turn purple, and trying to predict if it's going to happen is like trying to forecast a rainbow. Still, people reported several major hurricanes made the skies turn purple. Now, green skies might look just as spectacular as purple ones, but they actually also scream danger. They're usually there to tell you a thunderstorm, hailstorm, or a tornado is somewhere nearby. The unique color is a result of yellow sun rays getting mixed with the blue light coming from storm clouds. So you're enjoying a nice day by the ocean with a fresh breeze in your hair, when suddenly you notice the water starts retreating from the beach at a huge speed. This is a sign for you to start running as fast and far away from the beach as you can. This most likely means that a tsunami is on the way. A quick reaction maximizes your chances of survival. Now, if you notice the sea level is rising, but it doesn't seem too extreme, it could be another sign of an approaching tsunami. It happens in 40% of cases, and the incoming water is the first tsunami wave. The next one, way larger and more dangerous, usually follows in about 10 minutes. Another thing about tsunamis is that they like to arrive with some loud sounds. People describe them as thunder, the sound of a locomotive, a helicopter, or just a loud boom. Do you see a channel of choppy water on the beach? It's in your best interest to stay away from the water. There might be a rip current under the surface that can be extremely dangerous. Sometimes waves hit the shore in a weird way, which forms these rip currents. You might see a strange break in the waves or an area with a different color than the rest of the water. Random bits of seaweed going in all directions is another rip current warning sign. If you happen to find yourself caught in a rip current, try to stay afloat, but don't try to go against the current. You'll only waste precious energy. Scream for help and try to float your way along the beach. Once you break out of the current, swim diagonally to the shore. The next time you spot conically shaped clouds in the sky, remember it's a good time to start looking for some shelter. If it just stays like that, a severe storm is on the way. But if a cloud of that shape starts spinning around, it means it's about to transform into a tornado. If you have bees nearby, they can save you from big trouble one day. These hard-working little guys get more active than usual when they feel like a storm is on the way. They speed up to collect more nectar before it hits them. And once they're done with it, they'll always come back to the hive 10-15 to 15 minutes before heavy rain, even when there are no obvious signs of it coming. Their secret is super-sensitive hairs on the back that can pick up electrostatic buildups from storm clouds. For centuries, people have noticed that animals act weirdly a couple of days before big seismic events. Dogs can't start barking. Cows halt their milk and toads, rats, and snakes leave their homes. It looks like animals can feel smaller initial shock waves that humans don't even notice. Scientists have tried to find some legit explanation for it and run endless tests and experiments. But so far, they're still on their way to explaining this mystery. Can you smell ozone in the air? When a thunderstorm is on the way, it's the most distinct and pungent smell you can pick up. An electrical charge of lightning sets it free from higher altitudes. The other, more pleasant smell of rain is petrichor. 
rainwater wakes up molecules on plants, trees, concrete, and asphalt. Their aroma spreads all over the place. You can even feel that smell in your own mouth. All those positive ions in the air that a lightning bolt sets free gets mixed with ozone and your saliva. And that's how you get that bitter, metallic taste. When lightning is about to strike, you might hear bizarre crackling, buzzing, or vibrating sounds coming from metal objects nearby. Your palms may begin to sweat, and then you can feel your hair stand on end. That's a clear call for action, and that action is to run for your life. Positive charges are going through your body, trying to reach toward the negatively charged part of the storm. Trust me, you don't want these charges to meet. If you see no shelter that you can reach fast, Try to make yourself smaller than the objects around you. Drop down your umbrella and stay away from wire fences, metal pipes, rails, and other metallic objects. And don't lie flat on the ground, it's likely wet, which means it's a great conductor of electricity. If you suddenly notice crevices in the asphalt next to your house, it could be a sinkhole warning sign. Inspect your house on the inside. Does that door begin to jam? Or maybe there's a gap where the walls meet the ceiling. Uneven kitchen cabinets and drawers, slanted floors, stairs that begin to slope, water leaking after every rain, and displaced moldings are all signs that a sinkhole is about to open. To find out if it's definitely a sinkhole and how dangerous it is, you gotta consult with an engineering company. If you find a sinkhole that's already there, you gotta stay away from the sinkhole area fence or rope it off to make it less dangerous for others. You'll need professional help to fix it. Some volcanoes scream when they're about to erupt. Small earthquakes, which often happen before, produce a hum. It's mostly non-audible to human ears, but sometimes it reaches a frequency that lets you hear it as a strange rumbling or hissing sound coming from the ground. This noise is known as a harmonic tremor. With some volcanoes, it's the sound of magma bubbles vibrating when they're going through crevices in the crust of the Earth. But it's not always like this. If scientists manage to understand what exactly causes these volcanic screams, they could create a limited early warning system for volcanic eruptions. If you're out in the wild, pay attention to the water in creeks, streams, and rivers. If its level is quickly falling, even if it's raining, this might be a sign of a nearing landslide. And if you hear a faint rumbling noise or unusual sounds, like boulders knocking together, it could mean debris is on its way to you. It's a sign to head to safety immediately, like right now. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.